Like listening to podcasts just like this one from the team at Witch? Well, we've got some good news. All our podcasts are now available to listen to on YouTube and YouTube Music. So whether you like listening to Get Answers, Witch Shorts or Witch Money, all episodes can now be listened to directly on YouTube or through the YouTube Music app. To find them, just search for the podcast you'd like to listen to. YouTube's additional functionality also means that you can now read along with subtitles as you listen. Don't panic though, all which podcasts are still available to listen to elsewhere too. So wherever you listen, we'll see you soon. Hello and welcome to Witch Money Shorts. Inspired by our Witch Shorts podcasts, these episodes will drop every other Monday and bring you a taster of some of the best money advice taken straight from the Witch Money magazine. These episodes will be narrated by me, Lucia Ariano, host of the Witch Money podcast, and we'll be back with your regular money podcast episode this Friday. Today, though, we're helping you get to grips with the rules around care funding and the typical costs you could face. This article was originally written by Megan Thomas. Once you reach the age of 65 in the UK, you can expect to live for another 18 years if you're a man or 21 if you're a woman. That's according to the Office for National Statistics' most recent life expectancy data. In 1980, these figures were 13 years for a man and 17 for a woman. Living for longer means that it's more important than ever to consider our future care needs and how these will be paid for. But it's not an easy subject to broach. In our March 2024 survey of 1,091 which members, 56% of respondents said that they hadn't discussed the planning of later life care with their loved ones. How much does a care home cost? The answer can vary significantly depending on where you live. According to data from care home search engine Lottie, the cheapest area for a self-funded bed in a care home is the northeast, where the average weekly cost for basic residential care as of April 2024 is £1,035. The most expensive is London, where the average weekly cost is £1,383. Nursing care, which provides additional support by a registered nurse, costs more than residential care because of the level of medical qualifications staff are required to have. Costs are also different for respite care, in which you only spend a few weeks in a care home to give at-home carers a break. Watch out for hidden fees when considering care home costs. For example, bills or transport to medical appointments aren't always included. So ask if these costs are included when you visit a home. How much will the council pay towards care fees? When making arrangements for care, the first step is to go through a free needs assessment with your local council. You can then apply for funding assistance from the council. You won't be eligible for help unless the value of your savings and assets falls below a certain threshold known as the upper capital limit. This varies depending on where you live. In Scotland, you'll also be eligible for free personal and nursing care if you need it. In England, Northern Ireland and Scotland, there is an upper and lower capital limit. Even if your assets are valued at less than the lower limit, you'll generally still need to contribute to your care costs from your income, for example a pension, and the council will pay for the rest. If your capital falls between the upper and lower limit, you will contribute the same income plus a tariff income, which is £1 a week for every £250 you have in savings between the two limits. The council will carry out an assessment of your assets to determine their value and what funding you're entitled to. Most assets are included in these assessments, except for personal possessions such as jewellery. If you're receiving care at home, your home won't be considered in your financial assessment, but it will be if you move into to a care home, unless certain circumstances apply, such as your spouse or a close relative over the age of 60 still lives there. You'll have 12 weeks after beginning a long-term stay in a care home before the council considers the value of your home as part of the overall value of your assets. If the council finds you've given money or your home away to fall below the capital limits, deliberate deprivation of assets, it will charge you as if you still owned that asset. Adrian Quick, an independent financial advisor at Harper Lees, who is accredited by the Society of Later Life Advisors, SOLA, says, While there are some smoke-and-mirror schemes promoted as offering fail-safe transfer of assets to a non-assessable status, 
It's the timing and intent that may leave the door open for the local authority to recover assets to fund social care needs. If at any point while paying care costs, your assets fall below the upper capital limit, the council will start contributing to your care costs. Can the NHS fund my care? Unlike councils, the NHS provides funding based solely on medical need, regardless of financial situation. However, it's only for those with the most extreme needs. Most people who apply for this kind of funding won't be accepted. NHS Continuing Healthcare, CHC funding, is awarded to those who score highest on an assessment of the intensity and complexity of their needs and therefore require the most intensive care. Assessors will look at areas such as breathing or mobility and see how severe each need is. If a need is severe but consistent and possible for one person to manage, it's unlikely that you'd be eligible for funding. It's best to apply for NHS funding after your needs assessment with the council but before the funding assessment. You can also apply for NHS funded nursing care, FNC, which is available to those with less intense but still significant caring needs who are in a nursing care home. This is offered at two flat rates at £235.88 per week or £324.50 per week, which will cover the additional costs of nursing care but not residential fees. Are next of kin responsible for care fees? There's no legal obligation for next of kin to pay for care fees. When the council carries out its financial assessment, it will only consider the assets of the person going into care. As the next of kin of someone going into care, you can provide a top-up fee. You might decide to do this if your loved one is receiving council funding, but you're not happy with the homes in the council's budget. If your loved one is unable to sell their home, but the value of their home means they're ineligible for financial help, you won't necessarily have to step in to pay yourself. IFA Adrian Quick explains, If the funding gap is linked to delays in the sale of a property, a deferred payment, DPA, from the local authority should be considered. This is a month by month loan sufficient to cover the care fees gap, secured by a first charge on the property and redeemed on completion of the sale. This avoids financial stress falling on the next of kin and creates a wider window for completion of the property sale, particularly where a chain is involved or activity in the property market has slowed. Can I avoid paying care fees? If you're found to be ineligible for council or NHS funding, you'll need to pay for care yourself. There's no way around this. In theory, there are ways to avoid your assets being included in the council's financial assessment. But there is also a risk that any legal manoeuvres will be considered deliberate deprivation of assets. For example, a couple could change their property from joint ownership to tenants in common. Then each could leave their respective half of their property to a trust in their will, rather than directly to their children. If one partner does their half of the property would be owned by a trust and therefore not counted in the surviving partner's fees assessments. If executed poorly though, you could be left facing huge care and inheritance tax bills as well as the costs of the trust. Mel Kenny, solid accredited chartered financial planner at Radcliffe and Newlands Wealth, says your estate could evolve over time such that you end up with very little in your name. For previously held assets to fall outside of a local authority financial assessment, changes would need to to have occurred well in advance of potentially requiring means-tested care as well as without the intention to avoid paying for care. The Witch Money Helpline has even heard cases where recipients of gifts and trusts have been approached by the council to pay the care costs of the person who made those gifts. Catriona Smith, SOLA accredited independent financial advisor at Chase de Vere, says many people believe if they have given away capital more than seven years ago, it won't be taken into account. However, while the seven-year rule may apply to inheritance tax planning, gifts given seven years before a person dies will be tax-free, regardless of their value. This isn't the case for care home fees assessments and anything given away could still be classed as deprivation of assets. If you need to make any decisions like this, you should enlist the help of a solicitor who is a member of the Society of Trust Estate Practitioners, STEP. Will I have to pay care fees if I have dementia? Dementia care is usually more expensive because of the extra staff resource required to provide adequate care. Due to its complexity and intensity, those with dementia are more likely to get NHS continuing health care funding, but it's still difficult to get funding. If you or a loved one have dementia and still live at home, you could be eligible for a council tax discount if you live in England, Scotland or Wales. This is worth 25% for those with severe mental impairments such as dementia or other conditions such as Parkinson's disease who 
you live with another adult, while those living alone qualify for a 100% discount. Will I be eligible for attendance allowance in a care home? Attendance allowance is a benefit for those over state pension age who have a physical or mental disability, which means they need someone to care for them, although you don't have to have a carer to claim. There are two different rates of attendance allowance depending on the level of need, £72.65 and £108.55 a week. If you move into a care home and your care is paid by the local authority, you won't be able to claim attendance allowance. For self-funders and those who get NHS-funded care, attendance allowance payments aren't affected. If the council pays for your care, some of your state pension and any pension credit payments will go directly towards paying for your care. How much does care at home cost? More people are awarded council support for care at home than for residential care, as the value of your home isn't included in the council's assessment of your assets. Unlike care homes, home care costs will depend on how many hours you contract a carer for. According to Lottie, domiciliary care, where you receive care at home on an hourly basis, costs an average of £28 an hour. Perhaps unsurprisingly, the most expensive form of care is live-in care, in which a carer lives with you full-time. This costs an average of £1,596 a week. To get advice on the best way to pay for your care, it's worth going to an independent financial advisor who is accredited by Solar and who has a CF8 qualification from the Chartered Insurance Institute. Thank you to Megan Thomas for that original article, first published in Which Money Magazine's June edition. If you want to subscribe and get the magazine delivered directly to your door, click the link in the description of today's show. For more expert money advice, subscribe to our free newsletter and tune in to our weekly money podcast with news episodes that drop every Friday. I'll see you next time. Goodbye. Want to stay ahead of fraudsters and across the latest scams? At which we helped prevent an estimated £1.8 million in scam losses last year thanks to our Scam Alert newsletter. And each week we provide more information on the latest scam activity, helping protect you, your family and your friends. Stay in the know and avoid falling victim to scammers by joining over 450,000 people already signed up to our free Witch Scam Alerts. To join them, head to witch.co.uk slash scam alert and sign up today.